Hello and welcome to Phil LeBron's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called FTP BPDU Filter. The BPDU feature enables you to filter BPDUs on the interface port of your switch. This is handy for ports that you know should only be connected to user devices. It prevents unauthorized switches that are mistakenly connected to a BPDU protected switch from creating layer 2 switching loops. There are two types of BPDU filters, global level BPDU filters and interface level BPDU filters. Both types behave very differently. When enabled globally, BPDU filter will enable itself on interfaces configured with port fast. The interface will transmit 10 initial BPDUs to ensure there is no loop in the topology. If the interface receives a BPDU on the interface, it will disable port fast and BPDU filter on that interface, and the interface will begin normal spanning tree operation. When enabled on individual interfaces, spanning tree is effectively disabled on the interface port altogether. It will not send out BPDUs and will ignore any BPDUs it receives on that interface. If BPDU filter and BDU guard are enabled on the same interface, BPDU guard will not have any effect because BPDU filter takes precedence over BTU guard. The advantage that BPDU filter has over BPDU guard is that BPDU filter allows the port to dynamically switch to and from port fast, whereas BPDU guard restricts the port to port fast only. BPDU filter is yet another safety net to prevent potential loops in the network. Let's compare and contrast the BPDU filter feature when it's enabled globally versus when it's enabled on individual interfaces. When BPDU filter is enabled globally, it works specifically with port fast interfaces. But when it's enabled on interfaces, it works with or without port fast. When BPDU filter is enabled globally, it does not send out outgoing BPDUs except for the 10 initial BPDU packets to verify that the topology is loop free. While when BPDU filter is enabled on interfaces, it does not send out any outgoing BPDUs. When BPDU filter is enabled globally, the incoming BPDUs will disable port fast and BPDU filter on the interface. But when BPDU filter is enabled on uh, interface, it totally ignores incoming BPDUs, which means that it behaves just as if spanning tree was disabled. In order to configure BPDU filter at the global level, we will use the spanning tree port fast BPDU filter default command. In order to configure BPDU filter at the interface level, we will use the spanning tree BPDU filter enable command. Cisco Packet Tracer was created for CCNA students and does not possess the ability to simulate the BPDU command on its virtual switches. But by the magic of video manipulation, I'm going to cheat in order to display what you might see if it did support the command. We are looking at two switches. The left device is an authorized company switch and the right device is an unauthorized hacker switch. Let's pretend that we have already configured port fast and BPDU filter globally 
on the authorized company switch. When we power up the switch port fast, we will put the authorized switch port interface into the forwarding state shown by the green link lights. The unauthorized hacker switch sends out BPDUs to the authorized company switch, which disable port fast and BPDU filter on the interface. In other words, the interface will begin normal spanning tree protocol operation. Here are three switches and a computer. Let's pretend that we have already configured BPDU filter directly on all the interfaces of all three switches. The switches will not send out any BPDUs and will ignore any received BPDUs. So as far as the interfaces are concerned, spanning tree is not active. The result is that BPDU packets will continue to loop until the network is brought down. We have just looked at a method that can be used to protect port fast enabled networks from unauthorized switches. I hope this video was informative and I thank you for viewing.